Oh. No, white, white is good. Yeah. Thank you. The microphone is on. Microphone, and I guess. Uh, or... Okay, okay. Uh, let's proceed. Uh, we have here um, Joanna Sirisi, who will be uh, talking about weights in homotopy theory. Um, well, thanks for the invitation. Uh, it's great to be here and in Canada, partially. Um, okay, so I'm going to talk about weights uh, in homotopy theory. And let me begin uh, maybe to um, be a bit more precise of what I mean by weights and what I mean by homotopy theory. So for me, the main source of weights uh, will come from algebraic geometry. So I'll give myself an algebraic variety uh, defined over a field and weights come, I guess, in two different parallel stories. The first one is when take K is actually the complex number. So we have a complex algebraic variety. And in this case, the notion of weight will arise as part of the mixed Hodge structure on the singular cohomology. Well, we take our algebraic variety and we look at its complex points. So this is a uh, topological space and we look at it at its singular cohomology, maybe with a rational coefficient. So this carries some structure that I will explain later, which is called the mixed Hodge structure and gives us a notion of weight. Um, the other parallel story is maybe for an arbitrary field, or uh, maybe when K is a pielic field, then weights uh, arise. Well, now we don't have an underlying topological space, but weights arise um, as eigenvalues uh, given by uh, Galois actions um, on etal cohomology of uh, our variety, maybe the base change to some uh, algebraic closure of K. And in this case, we could take coefficients actually, uh, this works for any uh, FL, where L is a prime that is invertible in my field. So um, in these two parallel stories, we get uh, some notions of weights that I will talk about. Um, homotopy theory. Well, by this, I mean, I'm interested in studying algebraic objects or algebraic structures um, on chain complexes or co-chain complexes um, up to quasi-isomorphism. So to give some examples, of course, we have commutative differential graded, graded algebras. And well, if we're working over the rationals, we will have uh, rational homotopy. Um, but there are also, well, we can also study any other algebraic structures in chain complexes uh, like uh, operates and well, operatic algebras in general. And I will be talking also about symmetric monoidal functors. Uh, landing in chain complexes. So functors going from any symmetric monoidal category to the category of chain complexes, let's say of an abelian or a symmetric monoidal abelian category A. I will talk a bit more about this uh, in a second. So basically I want to put this type of weights in this type of algebraic structures. So maybe let me start by explaining uh, a bit the ideas uh, underlying these theories. And I will mostly focus in the complex case for this talk. Okay, so mixed hard structures. 
uh, this is going to be a crash course, one blackboard on mixed search theory. Uh, well, maybe you will probably all know if we have a, X, a smooth projective variety. over the complex numbers, then it's a uh, cohomology uh, well, with complex coefficients decomposes uh, into direct sum with, for every degree uh, into some vector spaces, HPQ, where P plus Q is equal to N. And these vector spaces satisfy this uh, symmetry property with respect to complex conjugation. And this is what is called a pure Hodge structure of weight N on HN, right? And actually, this has uh, strong topological consequences. The most obvious one, uh, Felized, uh, perhaps, is that um, um, Betty numbers of odd degree should be even or zero because of this uh, symmetry property. But a bit deeper than that um, is the formality of smooth projective varieties proven by the link Riffitz, Morgan, and Sullivan. Uh, formality means that actually, if you take the, the RAM algebra of your smooth projective variety um, with its exterior differential, you can connect it by a string of quasi isomorphisms to the RAM cohomology. And the important uh, property here is that these maps that connect your algebra with the cohomology, uh, they should be preserving the algebraic structure. So they, they, they are algebra maps. So this is a very strong application of um, homotopy theory to algebraic geometry. If you want. Um, so what happens if X is a singular variety or projective? Well, any variety. So um, any arbitrary complex algebraic variety, then uh, there's a similar story, but it's not exactly like that. Actually, if we go back to these two parallel stories, a uh, pure Hodge structure for a smooth projective variety translates in the et al. cohomology setting as this uh, Galois action, maybe when we take uh, coefficients in QL. Well, this um, pure Hodge structure translates into the Lin's own proof of um, the veil conjectures, stating that the eigenvalues of uh, the Frobenius action on et al. cohomology are pure of certain weights. Okay, so, and if we think that we should have these two parallel stories. Um, here it's clear in the Ital case, it's clear that when we don't have a smooth projective variety, we still have weights. They are not pure, but the weights still exist. So this same idea translates here to give mixed hot structures. And this was the idea of the link. Who um, mimicking what happens in the Ital side of the picture introduced a uh, filtration. So he proved that there exists a filtration this is called the weight filtration um, on the rational cohomology. Um, which goes from zero to, to N in general. So for every N, we have uh, such a filtration. This is called the weight filtration, uh, satisfying the following property. So basically, if we look at any of the successive quotients of this filtration, we take one of the vector spaces and we mod out by the subsequent one, uh, like uh, WM, HN, quotient W, M minus one, HN. The main idea is that this should behave like the cohomology of a smooth projective variety. So um, in particular, it, it should have a pure Hodge structure of weight M. So basically if we tensor this vector space by C, this should have a by degree decomposition uh, similar to what we had in the smooth projective case. Uh, we have some spaces and they satisfy some uh, conjugation properties. So basically now we have this filtration and you can cut your variety into pieces and, and get all these weights going on, okay. But um, okay, this is weights. This would be a talk on weights in cohomology. We want to put weights in homotopy theory. Um, so how do we do that? Well, it's gonna be a black box actually, but let me try to uh, motivate this a bit. So 
let me give an abstract definition in the setting of maybe DG algebras, okay? That we will um, we'll keep all the important information that we need or that we will aim to use from mixed heart structures. So uh, let's try to simplify a uh, notion. So definition, uh, weight decomposition, on a uh, DG algebra A is just, um, well, a decomposition into vector spaces, maybe indexed by the integers. So by the way, so we have a cohomological DG algebra. So I mean, each in each cohomological degree N, I will have a, an extra grading a weight and such that, well, the differential should preserve this weight. So the differential is of weight zero and it should be compatible with products in the sense that it's additive. Okay, so this is what I call a weight decomposition. And we say that it is pure if, well, I can take homology of the piece of weight P, and I want it to be trivial for all P different than N. So it is pure if I only have, uh, so I have my by degree decomposition, but uh, I say it's pure when, when in cohomology it only survives in this, uh, along this diagonal. Okay, so um, that's the definition. Ah, and then now that's an easy exercise. Um, so purity implies formality. Well, and since it's uh, easy, I will actually prove it. Um, basically, I have this, my algebra is this by graded object, right? So it's this two dimensional thing. Um, let me write the degree and the weight. So I have my object and things multiply um, as they should. And being pure means that the cohomology has only non-trivial uh, vector spaces uh, along the diagonal. So the rest is zero. And now to prove formality, I just need to connect these two things by a string of quasi-isomorphisms. And this is actually very easy now because I take the truncation um, Basically on the diagonal, I take the kernel of the differential here, I take zero and I keep my whole algebra on the other side. So I truncate along the diagonal. And if you do that, well, this is obviously a, an inclusion of algebras, uh, which is a quasi isomorphism. And I can project this to the cohomology. Basically the kernel of the differential projects into the only non-trivial cohomology groups and the rest is sent to zero. So this is uh, also a, was the isomorphism. So I like this proof because it's it's very simple. And actually, uh, well, you can you can you can work out uh, the converse uh, statement actually more or less. So formality also implies purity. Okay. So this is the very simple case of these algebras. Actually, maybe you can notice. I mean, a weight decomposition is just to have a monoid in complexes of graded vector spaces. So actually, you can figure out the definition of weight decomposition on any other um, algebraic setting that is not DG algebras. Okay, so now I need to put these two things together. No, this is forbidden. Am I doing well? Okay, yeah. We got training, you know. <laughs> okay, so um yeah so now the black box unfortunately i cannot i cannot explain all the details how we pass from the lynch uh, weight filtration on the cohomology to weight decompositions but the idea is of course yeah you it's a promotion from the additive to the multiplicative case in some sense plus using i mean the fact that uh mixed structures give some splittings, no? And these splittings are the 
kind of the splittings that we will get uh, here. So let me just state it as a theorem, which was proven by Morgan in the case of singular varieties and then was extended uh, well, in the form that I will state it, it, I guess I can attribute it to myself, but it was based on uh, strongly on work of uh, Navarro and actually Hain. So um, basically the theorem says that, well, uh, let X be an algebraic variety, um, complex algebraic variety, then uh, there's a weight decomposition. So there's a DGA or commutative DG algebra with a weight decomposition uh, computing the rational homotopy type of my algebraic variety uh, such that um, if we compute the graded piece of this weight decomposition, we recover the Lynch um, graded piece of the weight filtration. Yeah, something like that. So basically you can build this uh, model of your rational homotopy type, uh, which in cohomology uh, recovers the, the Lynch weight filtration. Any questions? Okay. So, well, maybe a remark. If we put together a theorem, this theorem and this proposition, of course, we recover the formality uh, of, of smooth projective varieties, right? Because they are pure and then we recover that, but maybe that's uh, not as exciting. So um, one of the things I wanted to explain is uh, that one can actually further exploit this in two directions. So now, um, no, this is this is this is forbidden. Um, okay, I can er erase this with this. This I didn't practice. Um, okay, let's do that. Okay, so I will talk about um, something we did with uh, Geoffroy Aurel. Uh, so we basically observed two things. Um, observation one is that this proof here of formality um, works equally well if this diagonal has a different slope. So it doesn't need to be just along the perfect diagonal, but you can change this slope a bit. So basically we define what is called um, alpha pure, where alpha is a non-zero rational number. And we want this to be zero for every P different than alpha N. Okay, so we just change the slope a bit. Basically what it means, so alpha purity means that if alpha is like A divided by B and these are co-prime, then it means that H uh, KB is pure of weight KA, okay? So in the case of alpha purity, cohomology will con be concentrated in degrees that are multiple of B, but, and then in this multiple degrees, they will be pure of weight um, KA. And well, um, of course, there are examples of such. Yeah. I wonder why the big. I wonder whether this this is so. First, is, is that functorial 
Next, is that uh, essentially unique? Um, I don't need to repeat the question, right? Okay, I'm be no because this microphone is being heard in Toronto. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, um, about factoriality, this will be observation two. So, um, yeah, just wait a second. Um, where was I? Yeah, observation one, right? So, for example, well, there are examples of alpha pure algebraic variety. So for alpha equal to one, we recover uh, the usual case of so smooth projective varieties are alpha pure. There are also some singular varieties that um, are one pure, like uh, orbifolds or so-called b-manifolds, or singular projective varieties uh, with Poincaré duality. There are some projective cones or stuff like that, uh, singular projective with uh, whose cohomology satisfies Poincaré duality will be one pure. In the two pure world, uh, we have uh, complements of hyperplane arrangements, so of CN, so take a yeah, hyperplane arrangements. So in particular, um, the modular spaces of uh, Gino zero curve and then marked points are examples of uh, two pure varieties. And then there are some examples that are interesting where alpha is not an integer. Uh, for example, well, if we take C D minus one point, well, this is the um, S to D minus one sphere. Uh, and so we have cohomology in degree to D minus one. Um, and this to D minus one is uh, pure of weight. Uh, to D. So we do get that alpha in this case is um, 2 D over 2 D minus one. And the same principle applies to uh, complements of co-dimension these half space arrangements. And for example, uh, it applies to configuration spaces of uh, a number of points in C, uh, D. All these are examples of alpha pure with this um, rational purity. So, yeah. Um, so they are bound to be formal. And the second observation, is that all these blackboards are highly functorial. Okay. I was not trying to prove anything. Let me count. Yeah. Okay, so maybe, all right, theorem. So uh, we proved that the functor actually Uh, if we take the piecewise linear forms functor and we restrict it to algebraic varieties that are alpha pure. This lands to chain complexes of rational vector spaces. Um, we prove that this functor is formal, is a formal uh, lax symmetric monoidal functor. Okay, so that's functoriality. So that's uh, formal factoriality. What is a formal factor? Well, this notion makes sense when we land in chain complexes because we can then compose with cohomology. So basically, formal factor. So um, if, uh, any factor from uh, from a lax monoidal category to the category of chain complexes. Yeah, I could compose it with cohomology and being formal means that H composed with F, uh, there are natural transformations connecting your functor with its, uh, itself composed with homology. Uh, this should be a monoidal natural transformation. So they should preserve the monoidal structure and they should be quasi isomorphisms on objects. So um, yeah, what it should be. The important fact about formal functors maybe 
is that whenever you have such a formal functor, any algebraic object you have here, whatever, will be sent to a formal uh, something. So for example, if you have topological spaces here, uh, yeah, and this is the singular chains, if you restrict it to a category where, it, where the functor is formal, yeah, yeah, you will get formal algebras or formal operators or formal monoids or whatever. Question? Microphone. Uh, I think I'm confused about, is it blending in chain complex or in algebras? Well, okay, I'm, my, I'm treating it as a laximetric monoidal functor, which means, yeah, uh, effectively it's landing in, in algebras, but I, um, I can also state it like it's landing in chain co-chain co complexes, if you want, but, um, but it's symmetric monoidal, so it gives you the algebra structure. Yeah. For, for what monoidal structure on the source? Ah, well, algebraic varieties. So, pro, pro, product of algebraic varieties. This is a this this is a, so these algebraic varieties that are alpha pure. This is a symmetric monoidal category with the usual product of algebraic varieties. Sorry, yeah, I didn't specify that at all. Yeah, right. Um, actually, we proved a dual statement. If you want that the. If we take singular chains, uh, and you restrict it to alpha pure varieties, uh, this is also a formal functor. And this is often more useful if we take basically operates living uh, in algebraic varieties with alpha pure cohomology will be sent to uh, formal operates. And so, for example, this reproofs like these guys, the operates associated to moduli spaces of any type, then um, the chain, the singular chains will be formal. Yeah, stuff like that. So, yeah, shall I proof something? Um, can I erase? Yeah. Sure. So there you say that the purity is equivalent to formality. Uh, what about? Uh, so in that blackboard, you say that purity is, is equivalent to formality, and then you say that the same proof works for alpha purity. But what what is the? Is there some alpha formality or? Um, no, you just get to one, alpha equal to one. So if you're formal, you will be one pure. If you, okay, the, you're asking about the converse, no? If you're formal, um, you can take the grading automorphism. So uh, you can take the, the weight given by the degree of the cohomology basically will give you uh, one purity. So from alpha purity, you get to formality. From formality, you get to one purity if you want. Okay. okay. Um, okay, I'm being I'm being asked what's the difference between alpha pure and one pure. It's okay. Uh, uh, well, not much. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, yeah, when you work over Q, it doesn't matter. Uh, if we talk about Similar statements over FP, then, then there's a, there are some big differences, but uh, I think over Q, there's no big difference, yeah. Can I erase this blackboard? Any more questions about this blackboard? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I mean, okay, that statement is, uh, okay, I, I'm tricking you. Yeah. No, the, okay, what does it mean pure, formality implies purity? I was not very specific here, okay? Formality impl implies purity means if you are formal, there will be a model which is one pure, or actually which is alpha pure if you want. I can create any, but I can create one that is one pure. So uh, all this is up to quasi-isomorphism. So, because on the nose, you will, you will not produce a split, uh, you will not produce a weight decomposition on the nose, but up to quasi isomorphism. That's the idea. And then everything uh, is much uh, 
easier to do. Yeah. Thanks for the questions. It's it's great because, yeah, I was rushing too much, and now I think the timing. Uh, well, now, now yeah, <laughs> now it's a bit tight. Okay, so yeah, two observations. Uh, th uh, yeah, theorem. I actually didn't want to talk about purity, so uh, my talk was supposed to be about non-purity. So let me see how many minutes of non-purity do we get? Fifty-five. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so maybe I can comment how we maybe. Okay, just 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 a comment on or maybe steps of the proof or steps well whatever um so ah uh, I didn't have to erase this blackboard okay um, so basically if we want to prove this is the singular change we want to prove that the singular change is formal for algebraic varieties well the first thing you need to do is uh, promote the Lynch construction of uh, weight or mixed host structures to um, to the chain level. And actually, this is what maybe Morgan and Hain and Navarro did. Uh, but then if you put it in a more functorial language, maybe, OK, we need some category that the Lynch introduced already. This is a category of mixed host complexes. These are some objects that are a bit more flexible than if you consider complexes of mixed Hodge structures, so maybe complexes of mixed Hodge structures is here. Uh, but actually, okay, these are symmetric monoidal categories, and actually there's an equivalence of infinity categories between these two. So um, what we do is uh, we pass to, so we build this functor uh, from uh, uh, this infinity functor from algebraic varieties to mixed Hodge complexes in a symmetric monoidal way. So the lean defined it with values in the homotopic or derived category of this, but uh, you just uh, promote it multiplicatively somehow. And then thanks to this equivalence of categories, we land in chain complexes of mixed Hodge structures. And then I can forget all the mixed Hodge stuff and get to uh, complexes of vector spaces. And actually, so this composition is just my uh singular change functor now the good thing what i got from doing uh these factorizations from, to mix hodge structures is that actually mix hodge structures uh well they don't split but the weight filtration splits and this means actually that this forgetful factor uh factors through a category of these graded weight decompositions that i was talking about so basically it factors th through the category of graded vector spaces in a non-trivial way. I mean, if we restrict to alpha pure varieties here, this will give me alpha pure um, graded objects. And this is the category of alpha pure weight decompositions on algebras that I was talking about. And the same proof of formality for differential graded algebras. There was this truncation um why is there no blackboard here okay but this is not the right one okay so yeah whatever um the same proof of the only thing that i proved today uh shows that this functor here is formal this is a formal functor it's a forgetful functor from graded vector space or a total functor, if you want, from graded vector spaces to vector spaces, and this functor is formal. But now, if you pre-compose pre any formal functor, uh, you will still have a formal functor. So all this thing here is formal, which implies that this is formal. So basically, yeah, we had all the ingredients uh, before. Now, well, there's one small detail here that these are infinity functors. So we get formality of an infinity functor. And now, um, well, one needs to strictify this uh, result, but there are results of Hinich. So there's more, some rigidification to do. 
which works. So uh, there's this result of Hinnis that basically tells us if we have an infinite, if we have a functor, a symmetric monoidal functor, which is formal as an infinity functor, then it's formal as a an actual uh, plane factor, functor. So more or less this, uh, well, I summarized the paper in a line. So I hope it's clear. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to talk about non-pure weights. So the, um, the idea that I wanted to transmit um actually is that okay purity is great right because basically if you restrict to alpha pure things then everything will be formal in a highly factorial way um but there's life after purity that's what i'm trying to uh accept and prove so let's talk about this in the last 10 minutes Oops. Oh. Okay, so non pure weights. And basically, I wanted to talk about some joint work in progress. Progress with uh, Bashar. Ale. Where we basically yeah, try to convince ourselves that non purity is actually not the end of the world. And we can say many interesting things. So the first thing uh, we noticed is well, there's there's actually a very old definition that involve, uh, involves weights, and it goes back to Bodhi and Sullivan uh, in the 70s. And well, they say a weight decomposition. No, they don't say that. They don't say that. They say um, a topological space. Uh, has positive weights if um, it has a DGA model which has a weight decomposition in the sense that I defined before but of course now P is uh, positive so um, well except from the zero degree yeah? um, maybe here um so for all and bigger than zero so if there exists this algebra uh and where in degree zero is just zero and well of course this should be a model such that um a models the rational homotopy type of my space okay so a topological space has positive weights if there's a weight decomposition with positive weights. Um, and it seems like a very innocent definition, like not very strong thing to ask for. Um, yeah, and it actually gives a strong homotopical uh, obstruction. So not every topological space, not every homotopy type admits uh, positive uh, weights. In fact, they introduced this notion to study what um, some notion that was precursor or of, of rational homotopy, which was uh, the notion of P universal spaces. And actually positive weights translate into your topological space to having um, a family of automorphisms related to actually these grading automorphisms on your model. Um, but uh, okay, one example that fits this talk is that smooth varieties have positive weights. So, okay, this notion is restrictive, but not, not super restrictive. Like all smooth varieties have positive weights, um, but actually this gives uh, an obstruction, a homotopical, homotopical obstruction for a 
topological space to be of the homotopy type of a smooth variety. Um, and actually, positive weights also implies vanishing of various massive products. So one can play. The simplest example of a topological space that cannot be realized as a smooth variety. Do you, is it possible uh, to give an example? Yeah. Shit. I don't know this answer now. Uh, <laughs> um, I need to think about this. Oh, this, this is, um, can I give it to you during the week? <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, they exist. Um, yeah. Um, oh, okay. Let's use weights. Um, so, because uh, so there are many examples topological space but okay they build them so positive weight people uh build examples using rational homotopy you can build by hand ad hoc some uh, algebra some cdga which will not admit positive weights and then you can realize that but it's not the simplest example that they are a bit nasty these examples are like made by, by hand so they are not amazing i'll find you something better Okay, so, ah, do I have a clean one here? So, yeah, positive way. Actually, smooth varieties, oh, I can build you many examples now. So, um, smooth varieties actually not only have positive weights, but if you, um, if you recall the Lynch construction, actually, the cohomology, so if X is smooth, uh, the cohomology of X, um, uh, the weights, are concentrated, there are weights uh, in degree n, we have weights of uh, weight n and up to 2n. So basically, weights are, um, weights live here, there's nothing else here. So this tells you that, um, yeah, many bassy, massy products are bound to not exist. I mean, um, uh, Basically, because massive products uh, should preserve weights, but they lower the degree, um, and you should be staying in this cone. Uh, for example, you well, you can play and say many things about them, like quintuple massive products on H1 do not exist on a smooth variety. So now I can build you many algebraic examples uh, satisfying this condition. So. Yeah, we're exploring, exploiting this type of properties actually to talk about uh, the rational homotopy type of some objects that have been studied a lot in rational homotopy from the beginning. Actually, uh, the first is classifying spaces of uh, homotopy automorphisms. So I think from the very beginning there was a, so, I think it's in Sullivan's paper already, the rational homotopy type of uh, these guys be out um, of a topological space may be pointed. This is, uh, this admits a very concrete description. And so using this description and weight theory and proving basically that, uh, okay, maybe the theorem should be that weights behave well uh, in every homotopical construction that you want to do, then one can put so if you have a smooth variety, you can put weights in this. And actually, well, this is in general not a, it's not an algebraic variety, but it, it has weights. And actually we prove uh, things like, um, um, yeah, maybe the theorem should be, um, has positive weights. When X is uh, alpha pure, for example. So, um, and then this is telling you, this is uh, giving you restrictions on the, um, so it, it's an open question in, in rational homotopy, I guess, to know what type of spaces can be classifying spaces of, of this type. So um, we can uh, pose this more restricted question uh, by asking when this can be of an algebraic variety. So we need uh, to have positive weights. I'm not being very clear, but I hate to be over time and I only have one minute. So um, a similar story, we can study uh, mapping spaces or maybe the connected component of mapping spaces when f from x to y is an algebraic map. 
and well basically kind of putting weights in this type of constructions exhibits their motivic nature and gives you um well more information about these guys and you are in non-pure situations but this type of uh restrictions and the positive weights still give you some uh not formality but some vanishing conditions and some non-trivial conditions on on homotopy types so yeah now i'm waiting that yeah the minute is over thank you <laughs>